So what, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about optimized storage for OCP compute and storage performance. So you'll see a lot of you know, density, efficiency, performance themes, uh, which is common to the OCP tenants. We'll also touch on sustainability a little bit. Uh, so my, this is some legal disclaimer for you to study later on. Uh, but my name is Tamid Rahman, I work for Solidime. And this is a new entrant in the storage market with a lot of, you know, 50 years worth of innovation history. We're gonna talk about that. But really excited to be here for two reasons. One is we are new, we gotta get this name out. And number two is we have a huge potential in terms of growth for storage in front of us that we can make, we think that we can make a change there. So we'll talk about some of the OCP storage challenges that we think the OCP community is facing. And we actually also think that those are the right challenges to work on. If not, that you guys can reach out to us and tell us what to work on. So that's kind of the idea. It will be a dialogue, although there's no Q&A session here. But after the session, if you have some perspective, we would like to listen to that. Also, again, the common theme would be the driving the storage density up and efficiency. And they go hand in hand. If you have you know, uh, attended Charles Enemy's section, uh, session yesterday, you saw that, that how uh, you know, a, a little acorn can become a mighty oak, right? So from that perspective, we, we, we believe that the right journey starts at creating the right storage at the right density level that will bring you know, the footprint reduction, the TCO uh, benefit, and the power reduction at the data center level. And last but not least, don't leave before that. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at our upcoming product, which is based on 192 layer QLC NAND. And this is our fourth generation QLC NAND, so stay back for that because we're gonna be talking about some of those you know, um, details today. So with that, let's move forward. So at the beginning of this year, SK Hynix and Prior Intel, their, three, their NAND business reached their own inflection point when they created a, an unmatched technology portfolio between both the charge trap NAND and the floating gate NAND. And that was done to invest continuously for the innovation cadence and to scale at large for data center deployment. These two entities, Intel and SK Hynix, has been the, in the forefront of creating customer-inspired design, both at the client and the data center segments. So now that we are together, we're gonna be continue to provide world-class reliability and quality, and also try to validate, there's a lot of validator here in the, uh, within the Solidam community here, and validate at the customer spec and also go beyond the commonly held industry specifications. That is our goal. And I think we, this is a very exciting, exciting time for us. And if we just look back into history, 50 years of history of innovation in the storage side, you can see all the way back in 1988 where we started with our, you know, our flash devices. Some of the key things that we brought to the market was you know, basically collaborating with OCP and becoming the co-founder as part of Intel. That was that was an awesome thing that we did back in 2011, and we are seeing the you know, fruit of that. We also brought to the market form factor called Ruler. Anybody remember Ruler? So we use that name Ruler, right? That Ruler became EDSFF. And you can see in our product portfolio, there's a wide variety of EDSFF. If you have gone to a Michael Smolin session, he actually talked about how many variants, can, you, can anybody answer? How many variants of EDSFF? 11, 11 variants of EDSF, but we're gonna talk about it, right? So yeah, that's, that's growing, and that's growing for a reason, because the market needs them. And uh, we are innovating in that area too. We are also bringing, as I said, two different 3D NAND technology, charge trap and floating gate, but not only that, we're also bring, bringing leadership TLC and leadership QLC product offering in our roadmap. Last but not least, if you have attended FMS, Flash Memory Summit, we declared that we're gonna work on 238 layer uh, TLC and QLC NAND on the charge traps side. And then also on the floating gate side, we've demonstrated the first functioning PLC SSD 
um, on the stage during the key keynote. So these are exciting journey that we are actually having, um, uh, having to experience. So with this journey going forward, we see that we have a unique perception of understanding the commonly held storage challenges that the OCP community think they are facing and that we are also trying to innovate there. Number one, trying to store more data. Data, you know, growing. We need to feed more and more data. Think about AI where there's a lot of ingest happening, you're doing a lot of data analysis and then there's a lot of interfer interference happening. These are all signs of data growth. And we need to make sure that our products are aligned to that and can support it. Data, high density SSD is not only the solution, we also have to make them performant because with the capacity growth, there's also a need for performance. So this is where accessing the data at a faster rate is also important. So when we innovate, we look into the capacity growth and we also look into the performance, the QoS and the endurance aspect of it. When these drives are getting deployed, there needs to be efficiency. There needs to be efficiency deployed with lower failure rate, better manageability, and better you know, footprint reduction and whatnot. And this is where high density QLC will come into picture. We'll show you some examples there. TLC is already there, but we are actually trying to push that envelope towards QLC and going to different tier where we have not gone with our you know, NAND solutions. And then last but not least, when these drives are deployed, think about it, 70, 80% of the data center deploying one vendor's SSD, they need to be reliably deployed. That means they need to be predictable in terms of telemetry, it needs to, need to be predictable in terms of the log and manageability, and Myron actually talked about it in one of the sessions where he actually touched base on NVMe MI, going to MCTP and whatnot. So I think these are common challenges that the OCP community share with us and then we are also innovating in them. And again, it's an exciting time be, to be here uh, and talking about these areas. Density growth starts for us at the NAND level, at the media level, right? So where we are actually you know, packing up all the bits in a cell and pushing it to the end user and creating the SSDs. If you look into our progression, starting from Gen 1, 3D NAND SSD and NAND, to 60, uh, going to Gen 2, 3D NAND, QLC NAND, we had 133% bit density growth. This is one of the key vectors that we monitor. We also monitor what is our layer count increase. We also saw between 64 layer, 96 layer, 144 layer, which we are shipping in you know, uh, high volume right now. We had 50% Gen over Gen bit growth over, uh, over these uh, generations. And we're not stopping there. We already talked about 238-layer um, um, TLC and QLC charge tap NAND. We are actually bringing to the market 192-layer QLC. And then working on PLC, that will also be another disruptive uh, technology, which will basically go into the tepid storage market, you know, the last uh, high-performance uh, HDD market that will be disrupted by those PLC solution. So going back to that commitment, we're committed from the media level all the way to the SSD level. And that brings me to this uh, discussion about form factor. So when users use these SSDs in different form factors, we want to make sure across the different for form factor offering, we have the right density offering as well. So going back from the NAND density growth, all the way going from a U.2 to a EDSFF industry transition that we are actually observing right now, uh, ranging between 2U density optimized server, 1U performance optimized server, and 1U density optimized server. Everywhere there is a transition happening. And then that transition may have a little bit of RAM time difference between those uh, areas. But overall, you're seeing that move from U.2, M.2 to more varied EDSFA form factor. We think that the 2U density optimized servers in future will move from U.2 to E3.S. And that is due to other reasons like, it's not only for SSDs, but other accelerator cards, FPGA, that will also come in E3.S form factor. If you're designing from IOPS per rack uh, optimization uh, concerns, then you're, uh, for the one U server, then you're actually probably looking at U.2 to E1.S form factor, where we have two different density points of offering. 
And then last but not least, the most disruptive area here is the one U density optimized server where the QLC JBOF is making uh, an appearance in a big way from, from our perspective where the E1.L is the choice form factor for that uh, particular server configuration. So again, this is, these are the form factors that you don't only really show on this slide, but you can see it in our demo. It will see, see on our roadmap. All of our upcoming products will have offerings across all these form factors. If you're missing one or two, please come and talk to us and we'll, we'll be able to you know, um, have a good discussion about our future roadmap and whatnot. So with that, I'm gonna actually go back to the fourth generation QLC SSD introduction topic that I talked about. This is a game changer SSD. You know that we are leading in QLC in terms of you know, D5 P5316 product, which is you know, widely deployed in uh, CSP and enterprise. This is a product that will come and become a drop-in replacement for the TLC programs. And this is on 192 layer, our latest QLC NAND uh, technology. It will have multiple form factors that I mentioned previously. It will have the density offering all the way up to 30.72 terabyte, and all the way down to 3.84 terabytes. So we're actually covering a bigger range this time for this product. And uh, last but not least, it comes with 32 petabytes written lifetime endurance on the device. I'm gonna pause here a little bit and try to understand what is this endurance spec going to do for you. Let's say you are a CDN uh, developer or CDN deployment person. For this type of endurance, you can think about it that if you're writing always randomly, 100% random, then you can write up to 700 terabytes an hour for the next five years every single day. But you're a CDN person, so you're not gonna do random writes, right? You're gonna always do a little bit of read, idle time, you're gonna be doing some writes, and those writes may be sequential. So let's, for argument's sake, think about it. It's a 100% sequential write workload. You're gonna be able to do 100 petabytes of writes to the device. What does it mean to you? How many movies you can store with that type of a capability? It's about 600 high resolution movie with 1200 hours of movie time in every single hour without any pause for the next five years every day. That's a tremendous amount of endurance that these drives are packed with. So I would like you to take the advantage of these form factors and the, and the endurance that we are providing with this game changing uh, fourth generation QLC SSDs. Now, let's uh, draw some other conclusion here with what does it do to an OCP-like configuration, right? So I picked two form factors here. One is an E1.S form factor, which is you know, small, you know, slim form factors for edge applications, telco, CDN type of applications. You can actually use them at the highest capacity. And if you take, for example, a mainstream TLC E1.S, four terabyte, you can actually increase your capacity by 4x, thereby reducing the footprint, increasing TCO, and at the same time, you're probably thinking about it, hey, what's gonna go do to my performance? Your performance will not have any visible change because you're gonna see sequential read throughput 5% higher than comp TLC. You're gonna be in 10%, not only on random read, but also on random write, 10 to 13% within the nearest TLC for that uh, entry level TLC in the data center. So that's an example of E1.S. So if I go to a 2U dense server, this is by the way a SNEA inspired uh, configuration where they're packing 44 of E3.S, right? So I talked about it, 2U density optimized solutions going to E3.S, so this is the example. And we have a solution, 192 layer QLC SSD will bring up to 4x capacity per 2U. We already demoed one petabyte in 1U or 2U. This is 1.35 petabytes per 2U. Huge density growth. And again, that same theme remains. Performance does not really become a challenge here because we are within 10 to 15% of entry level TLC data center. So again, so all these things is because just to reiterate our commitment, to the OCP initiatives. 
First of all, I want to highlight a few of the areas, and for some of the audience in, the, in this uh, confer conferences are contributing from the Solidium side to OCP. I would like to thank you and congratulate you for your efforts. Uh, we are innovating with storage thermal efficiency. We have a great session tomorrow where Hardeep is going to talk about uh, thermal simulations and other uh, findings that they have. Please join that. We are, as you have seen, we are really committed to storage density. Uh, check, uh, check out the storage review article that came out with Viking System. They have stuffed 750 terabyte of raw flash, delivering 175 gigabyte per second uh, throughput, beating the nearest TLC competitor in that uh, configuration. So again, density commitment stays very true for us. We're bringing the right form factors for each uh, segments. And last but not least, our data center DNA from the grounds up becomes creating for the high quality and reliability, making sure there is zero tolerance for silent data corruption when these drives are deployed. So you can actually deploy them with your peace of mind. Last but not least, sustainability, a common theme in this conf conference. Those of you who have gone to Charles' session, I, I got to reiterate. Um, you know, small acorn or little acorn becoming a giant uh, oak tree, right? So these steps that we are taking at the drive level in terms of reliability, in terms of capacity growth, in terms of creating manageability, is creating that ripple effect in that sustainability, so the, the, the chain reaction. And we will be committed to that and working with you guys on all these form factors and, uh, you know, all these offerings that we are doing. So with that, uh, I want to end here. But uh, please go and uh, find our booth there because we are actually demoing the drive that I just ma basically mentioned, the fourth gen QLC, 192 layer QLC data center SSDs being uh, you know, shown there uh, uh, against some of the COM drives. And would like to get some feedback from you on how we can design them in, in, your, uh, in your environment, in your applications. With that, uh, thank you for joining. And uh, let us know how we can help. Thanks.